Viewer discretion advised. Please be advised that this video includes translations of historical speeches or works, recreated using advanced AI tools to replicate the original voices and styles. These reproductions may contain controversial, sensitive, or outdated viewpoints and language. The content is presented in its historical context and does not reflect the views or values of this channel. Viewer discretion is advised, particularly for younger audiences. We, by grace of heaven, Emperor of Japan, seated on the throne of a line unbroken for ages eternal, enjoin upon ye our loyal and brave subjects, we hereby declare war on the United States of America and the British Empire. The men and officers of our army and navy shall do their utmost in prosecuting the war. Our public servants of various departments shall perform faithfully and diligently their appointed tasks, and all other subjects of ours shall pursue their respective duties. The entire nation with a united will shall mobilize their total strength so that nothing will miscarry in the attainment of our war aims. To ensure the stability of East Asia and to contribute to world peace is the far-sighted policy which was formulated by our great illustrious imperial grandsire and our great imperial sire succeeding him and which we lay constantly to heart. To cultivate friendship among nations and to enjoy prosperity in common with all nations has always been the guiding principle of our empire's foreign policy. It has been truly unavoidable and far from our wishes that our empire has now been brought to cross swords with America and Britain. More than four years have passed since China, failing to comprehend the true intentions of our empire and recklessly courting trouble, disturbed the peace of East Asia and compelled our empire to take up arms Although there has been re-established the national government of China, with which Japan has effected neighborly intercourse and cooperation, the regime which has survived at Chongqing, relying upon American and British protection, still continues its fratricidal opposition, eager for the realization of their inordinate ambition to dominate the Orient, both America and Britain, giving support to the Chongqing regime have aggravated the disturbances in East Asia. Moreover, these two powers, inducing other countries to follow suit, increase military preparations on all sides of our empire to challenge us. They have obstructed by every means our peaceful commerce and finally resorted to a direct severance of economic relations, menacing gravely the existence of our empire. Patiently have we waited and long have we endured in the hope that our government might retrieve the situation in peace. But our adversaries, showing not the least spirit of conciliation, have unduly delayed a settlement. And in the meantime, they have intensified the economic and political pressure to compel thereby our empire to submission. This trend of affairs would, if left unchecked, not only nullify our empire's efforts of many years for the sake of the stabilization of East Asia, but also endanger the very existence of our nation. The situation being such as it is, our empire for its existence and self-defense has no other recourse but to appeal to arms and to crush every obstacle in its path. The hallowed spirits of our imperial ancestors guarding us from above, we rely upon the loyalty and courage of our subjects in our confident expectation that the task bequeathed by our forefathers will be carried forward and that the sources of evil will be speedily eradicated and an enduring peace immutably established in East Asia, preserving thereby the glory of our empire. If you have suggestions for other historical speeches or works you'd like to see recreated, please leave a comment below with your recommendations. Your input is invaluable in shaping our content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more unique and thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching and being part of our community.